secular activist Raif Badawi freed from Saudi prison after 10 years. After 10 long years, Raif Badawi, a prominent human rights advocate and founder of Saudi Free Liberals Forum, is finally free after being arrested in 2012. In 2008, Badawi started the Saudi Free Liberals Forum, an online blog where members debated the political and religious affairs of Saudi Arabia. In 2012, Badawi was arrested in Jeddah and charged with, quote unquote, insulting Islam through Islamic, uh, through electronic channels. He was initially punished with 1,000 lashes. In 2013, the punishment was extended to seven years of imprisonment and 600 more lashes. However, in 2014, the Saudi Supreme Court upheld the initial sentence of 1,000 lashes and extended Badawi's sentence to 10 years in prison. He was also fined more than $260,000 and a 10-year-long travel ban was imposed on him. And Saf Hader, Rife's wife, has, has been living in Quebec, Canada, along with their ch three children since Rife's arrest. And Saf told uh, agency France Press that she uh, that her husband ha called her about his release. Reporters with, Without Borders tweeted that they will ensure that he will be able to rejoin his family in Canada despite his 10-year travel ban. Oh, wait, he can leave? No, he can leave. Oh, so this is very similar to the um, feminist activist Lena Al Hathlul, who you know mm -hmm. fought for women to be able to drive in Saudi Arabia after mm -hmm. she was finally released from prison. Um, they put a travel ban on her for at least two years, uh, which is, you know, people interpret as a way so that these people can't become mm -hmm. celebrities, you know, escape and become celebrities and human rights campaigners abroad to keep them under their control within their jurisdiction and under their thumb and keep them silenced. Right. And so for he needs to stay in Saudi Arabia for another 10 years. Um, that is what the judge ruled um, back several mm. years ago. But there are lots of people who are going to be fighting for him to leave before that. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of so, you know, there's been huge global campaigns for Rife since his arrest. And mm -hmm. it's really unfortunate that he actually did have to serve his full sentence. I believe his sentence finished on February 28th. So he had to serve the full 10 years. But mm -hmm. so I was talking to Ali Rizvi and Ali is a family friend of the Badawis and is often talks to the press on behalf of Rafe's case. And he was saying that now it's really, really important time to mobilize. Like the fact that he was released is amazing news. And this really needs to be breathed like new life into fighting for his case so that we can help get diplomatic pressure so that he will be released early. And what's really interesting, actually, well, the video that I want to play will go into this, but... I have to say the government of Canada has really gone, I mean, there's there's things to criticize, but for the most part has gone above and beyond to campaign for Rife, who is a non-citizen, as well as his sister, who um, Samar Badawi is a uh. female rights activist who's been imprisoned many times in Saudi Arabia for her activism. Um, and Canada froze relations with Saudi over the case of the Badawis who are non-citizens. Um, right. So there's a lot of hope in terms of how the government of Canada can really go further in intervening and maybe getting him home faster. Um, so Ghostman is saying the travel ban is effing stupid. He's not free until he's able to be reunited with his family. Um, his, is his family going to meet with him in Saudi Arabia or are they going to stay out of Saudi Arabia? I have no idea. They haven't spoken about that, anything like that to the press, but I mean, I because, can't, that doesn't seem safe to me. Yeah, that doesn't seem safe at all. So technically after, even his, even when he's free, he still can't he see, see his family. Tec so technically he went from a smaller uh, jail cell to a, just a bigger cell. Uh, jail. He's still kind of in jail. He's just free within the country, but he's still not free because he can't, he has to watch. He can't be open about what he's saying. He can't be critical. The fa his family now have to be 
more careful about what they say because they could easily just put him back in jail. So, and we can't be very aggressive about how what we how we talk about this because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to cause too much trouble as well for him to go back in jail. So technically, like, this is like kind of scary, you know. I mean, not kind of scary. It's very scary. Like you have to watch yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, it's so it's so frustrating because you have to actually be. This is a case where you have to actually be very polite when you're doing your activism against you know for his for him to actually become free free like real free out of saudi arabia you have to be careful not to make things worse so Mm -hmm. these these like these people who are responsible for all these human rights violations and you want to basically give them a piece of your mind you just have to like you have to just like be very respectful and be very you know very you know gentle about like thank you thank you so much for bringing him out of jail you're so amazing thank you can we please have him out of the country right because you can't give him you know they, these are evil people but you can't give them a piece of your mind because because now that you gotta go put him back in jail if you're like don't watch your, what you say so it's so it's so infuriating that you have to be so respectful to the people who have separated the father of your children mm-hmm. right from your children for 10 years and instead of like being angry with them, you have to act like that you love that you are. Oh my God! Thank you so much for for just letting him free right now. Like imagine having to thank the people who have did this to your family. Like that's like that's torture. That's psychological torture. I don't know. I hate it. I hate it. I don't know. It's so messed uh, up. Um, yeah. Could you play that video that I sent you? Because it explains yeah. another interesting aspect of this. Dolly is saying, this is crazy. They want to imprison him in the country. Are those people for real? (laughs) It's happened to a lot of other people, unfortunately. Yeah, this is. All right, hold on. Let's go. Guys, can you please don't, don't distract me with other news. We're talking about this news right now. Okay. Every Friday for a decade, loud demands here for Raif Badawi's freedom. Enfin. Oh my God. But today, his wife says she can't find the words. Her husband released at last after 10 years in a Saudi prison. It's been a long time since I've woken up in the morning with a smile, she says. In 2012, Badawi was jailed in Saudi Arabia after he criticized religious figures and promoted liberal values of Islam online. His sentence included a thousand lashes. He received 50 in a public square. That sparked widespread outrage, the United Nations calling it cruel and inhuman. After that, he was not lashed again, though he did serve the full time. His daughter, now 18, says she can't wait to see him, but that reunion is uncertain. Another condition Badawi faces, a 10-year travel ban upon release. As far as organizations like Lawyers Without Borders, we will continue the campaign. We will continue to have a close watch on this, and we hope uh, this part of the sentence is not applied. Activists say the federal government should also step in. There's still a lot of other uh, places where Canada can meet and discuss with Saudi Arabia. Uh, The United Nations being one, but there's plenty of other places to discuss. Badawi's wife has Canadian citizenship. He doesn't, though Parliament did unanimously pass a motion asking Ottawa to grant it to him, a move pushed by the Bloc Québécois. But the government has not gone ahead with it yet. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweeted today that officials are now working to seek clarity on the conditions of Badawi's release, while his family and friends say they'll keep fighting until he's here. Wait, they, they said something here that I wanted to add a point, but I don't know, I forgot what the point was. Hold on. Wait to see him full time. Mm. Calling it cruel and inhuman. After that, he was not lashed again, though he. Oh yeah, not lashed again. I just want to highlight this point one more time because he was supposed to get more lashes than he got, but it was a- a- online activism that a lot of people dismiss as useful. Um, 
that eventually God those lashes to be removed. Like a lot of people keep always act like, oh my God, it's Saudi Arabia. Do you really think that Saudi Arabia cares about your online petition? Like apparently it, they do. Okay. Apparently somebody managed to get less lashes on their back because of the online pressure that all these activists managed to bring on. So whenever, like, you know, you know, so many people dismiss online activism, like remind them of this, remind them like there's sometimes, yeah, here's a, here's a, here's an honest truth. Most of the time it doesn't work. Most of the time it doesn't work. Sometimes it works. And these online activism, like trending a hashtag or signing a petition, it doesn't cost you anything. So give it the goddamn signature. Make the goddamn tweet with the hashtag because of the few times that it does. The few times that it does make a difference, it's worth makes the whole thing worth it. Even if it works one percent of the time, that's at least one at least one person not getting like hundreds of lashes on their back. You know, it's so popular that how people dismiss this. Even like even PewDiePie, I was like, oh my god, look at these petition. People think petitions making different. The the world's biggest, you know, one you know individual YouTuber, like is just spreading around the idea that these petitions don't work. So w imagine if they are actually working. Imagine spreading that idea in the world that they don't work. You are how irresponsible do you have to be to actually be spreading the idea that something that could have saved someone's lives you know, spread it, putting that idea out that they, it might not work. They, it, it never works. They, are you not afraid of being actually responsible for somebody experiencing more lashes on the back because something that you didn't do any research on whether or not it works, you just irresponsibly claiming that it doesn't work because it didn't work in one, a couple of instances that you saw? Like you have to be, you ha how could you sleep at night knowing like knowing that there is a possibility that you are responsible for taking the power away from a tool that actually could make a difference. Anyways, online activism, don't completely dismiss it. People are like, oh, you're just keyboard warriors, like you don't do anything. Well, I, well, you see, it makes a difference. Show these examples to people who want to dismiss it. Anyways. I'm so happy. No, <laughs> Suzanne is genuinely happy. Look at her. No, what? Tell us. What is it? <laughs> Wait, can you um, like scroll down so we can see that picture? Which one? This one? Yeah. Like oh. when I watched that news story about them celebrating yesterday, I was just like, "Holy crap! Look at how big she is." You know, like what really struck me is um Rife is the same age as you, Armin. And you're muted. No, I said, um, Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. He's been in this prison since he was twenty seven. Since he was like the same age as me. It's I don't know. I just, it really, it, what has happened to this family really breaks my heart. Just because he wanted to promote better ideas to people. <laughs> for doing something that we take for granted every day, or most people take for granted every day. And the rights they take for granted every day for saying that's something worthwhile that I would like to have, that I think my community should have. And his wife must be one of the strongest first people alive <laughs> to take her three children by herself to a new country, <laughs> figure out how to raise them, provide for them and protect them by herself, standing by her husband for 10 years. And 
and starting global campaigns for his defense. I'm in complete awe of the character and person that NSAF is. Like, the strength of character that that takes. It's, it's, it's astounding. And you know something that I just found out yesterday? Um, uh, the volunteer who helps us on our team write the blurbs for the news told me that in Urdu or in Arabic, NSAF actually means justice. No way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> NSAF is, by the way, for people who are not following, is the name of the wife. Rafe. And wow, that's that's <laughs> that's so poetic. It's amazing. I'm just so happy for their family, and I know that it's going to be a lot longer, longer than anyone would like before they can see each other again. But it must be, it's a huge step forward. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get so emotional about this. This is the third time I've cried since yesterday over this. Yeah, and actually, you know, you I'm glad you put that in perspective because all like we ha I have to remind everybody that all he's going through all of this simply for wanting more f for his country things that the rest of us just simply have and are so ungrateful for that we just take for granted we just being able having freedom of speech having secularism you know rights that we enjoy that other people like him have sacrificed so much and we're just like of course it should be like this of course it is like duh like this is how the, how it is the you know the de facto state of things are like this but like are, so many other countries don't have that and somebody dares just mention that this might be a better way to live and they have to pay this price this this is a huge price like armin you started in public 10 years ago Think about if that whole time in your life was actually just in prison. Yeah. Well, I started Atheist Republic when I was in Iran, but that's the reason why I didn't, you know, I didn't come out, you know, I just used the label Atheist Republic. I never used my name or anything because I was afraid of something like this. So I only became public about it when I left, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, imagine I would be, yeah. Atheist Republic like started 15 years ago. Like imagine like a five years ago in Iran. I was arrested for it while I was still in Iran. And I would be coming out now. Jesus Christ. God damn it. All that time I was be in jail. Holy crap, man. Okay. Why are you scaring me like this? Is a, this is like putting things in perspective. <laughs> this I'm is what mad. this is what I think about. <laughs> <laughs> all this all that time god damn it and i i that's horrifying and i don't have children imagine it would be like i would be you know imagine you had children that are growing up and you're not even seeing them every day that's like hell on earth yeah no yeah that's not a price anybody should pay god damn it yeah not that a price anybody should pay for anything let alone just for like hey how about some secularism here how about some free speech here just like and saying it in the most polite mild manner you know what i mean like like if you go and see what rave said he was like just like nothing he said was like in any aggressive or impolite or radical way right he suggested the most mildest things in the most polite manner no, nobody deserves like this punishment, let alone for for a crime that is not a crime at all. God, Today, guys. I learned that he's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I hope that helps us, Case. Yeah. Anything in the well, live chat you want? Yeah, go on. The last thing I want to say is, like I said earlier, you know, this is a huge cause for celebration, but it is also a call to mobilize. So I encourage people to go look up Rafe's case on Amnesty International because they provide a lot of resources about how you can um, help campaign for him because now is a really important time to push. And um, I will also be talking to some people I know about to see what we can do as well. So big cause for celebration. Um, and I want to give a special thank you to the Atheist Republic News team because this came out, this news happened yesterday. Usually we can never turn a news item around that fast, but for this, we push and we did it. <laughs> so uh, thank, thank you to the AR News team. Good job to our editors and our news team. Fantastic. And our writers. And you, by the way, yeah. Thank you, Susanna, for making sure we have this news. Um hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.